Okay, so we are on day one of our masterclass series for this week. So for those of you watching or joining me after it's been recorded, thank you so much. Um, this week's masterclass series is about the upper back. Um, we have plenty of people who come into clinic who have stiff upper backs, who have pain in their upper shoulders, they've got pain around the top of the shoulders, or you know they've got that forward head posture. So many of us struggle, many of us um, do struggle. I'm just fiddling here because I didn't quite uh, unwrap my uh, cords to the mic. Um, so today's series or today's topic was really about what, what does the upper back comprise? Um, if you have pain or you have issues or you have stiffness, um, most of us are inherently curled. We spend a lot of our days now hunched. We're either looking at our phones and we're doing things and we're here. Um, and when you see people from side on, instead of being nice and upright, people are hunched and their heads are way here. Um, and it, the, the head is heavy. Um, you know, if you're looking at the level of weight in your head, if you have your head upright, it might weigh maybe four or five kilos. If you start to move it forward, you can literally double or triple or quadruple the amount of weight that your head holds. So for every slight shift forward, you might find that you're doubling the load on the amount of work that the upper back muscles have to do. So what we're looking at when we're looking at things is really how invasive is it with the spine, um, how how much work and how much effort are you needing to hold yourself up? Um, and probably one of the big things that we've sort of seen from a, a physio point of view, so when we're talking about our clinical clients, one of the big things that we notice is there's been a massive change in how we spend our days. So, um, you know, inherently now, we are attached to the phone. We are, you know, constantly looking at things. We're constantly, um, emails come to the phone, obviously our phone calls, we text, we use our phone for searching, we, we pretty much are attached to our phones and many of us feel quite naked or that we've forgotten something or, you know, we've lost a whole side of us if we happen to leave our phone at home. So um, I think, you know, one of the big things that is an issue is, is the way that the modern world now functions. So think about how much time you are spending on things like tech. But then also think, you know, back, you know, 20 years ago. Um, so I've been a physio now for, I think, about 20, 29 years. Um, and I took a gap year from going to school to go into uni. Um, and I spent that doing um, an admin job. Um, so basically in a purchasing department. Um, and we had to you know, type on the old... Um, typewriters with the carbon copies to do the purchase orders. You then had to physically walk that purchase order down to the department if we wanted to do photocopying. We got up out of the chair and we had to go to the photocopier. And pretty much, you know, it's not the good old days were good old days at all. It's more that we don't do that anymore. Pretty much everything we have, we can control from here or we can control from here. And we just you know, press buttons and we've changed files, we've pressed buttons and we've done search different documents, we've pressed buttons and we've got access to the massive library that is the internet. Um, and we can press buttons and we can print it, the printer's there, or, you know, the filing's there, or the paper's there. So literally the need for us to move has diminished rapidly. Um, similarly, when we're now working and moving, you know, when we're in our cars and when we're doing things, we we very rarely have to do a lot of manual work. There is a lot more, um, obviously, power steering. We don't have that manual resistance. Most of us drive automatic, so we're not changing things a lot. We literally sit and that's it. Everything we need to do is easy. It's not like we have to wrench a massive manual steering wheel or even that we have to wind up windows anymore. So, you know, life has got very, very easy. Um, we definitely don't need the momentum and the movement and the muscle power behind what we used to, but it also means that we're very limited in how we move. You know, even things like reversing a car these days, um, if you check, you might check down the central console, but you might not check this way because a lot of us have 
um, reverse cameras. So, you know, most of us are just doing this and changing and um, changing how we move. So when we think about how we use our bodies, it's quite different to, you know, maybe how our parents or grandparents use their bodies. Um, and that means that in terms of the body and the upper trunk, we are seeing a lot more who are very, very stiff in their upper back, who are very sore through their neck. And again, you know, tech does have a lot to do with it, but it's also the fact that we're not moving as much as we used to. So today is all about what comprises the upper back. Um, what is it that we're looking at when we're talking about stiffness in our upper back? So a little bit of anatomy, which I know everybody loves, but at the end of the day, if you don't understand what's going on, then it's very, very hard to then manage and change what's going on. So we have obviously lower back. Lower back and the lower vertebra sit on the sacrum um, and they are very big, five vertebrae at the bottom of the spine, five, four, three, two, one. And they primarily are load bearing. So they take our body weight, they help us move. They're very sturdy. They're obviously very big and blocky. You can see at the back, the big back muscles, the big extensor muscles attach off these, which are very, very chunky vertebra. Okay. So from this section here, the top section here is the small minute neck vertebra in comparison and what these vertebra do is they obviously support the neck and they give us the mobility that we have to be able to move and turn our head okay so the vertebra on here are quite a lot smaller they're arranged a little bit differently and you can see they're relatively a little bit longer in how they they work are longer and skinnier from c7 you've got t1 to T12, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, which are these areas here. So from here to here, we have what we call our thoracic spine. Now, these are quite different vertebrae again, okay? So they form that little bit of a lazy S shape. They have spinous processes that if you look at them are pointing more down. So they are more on like a 45 degree angle from the spinous processes, but their actual joints, if you look at them, are here. They're like plain flat joints. So they stick this way. So our upper body, our upper neck, rather are 45 degrees. The joints of the thoracic spine are this way, and the joints of the lower vertebra are that way, okay? What does the thoracic spine do? Basically, the thoracic spine is a lot more rigid than our upper and lower, our neck and our back. And the thoracic spine's job is to allow the ribs to attach, okay? The ribs attach and the shoulder girdle, the shoulder blade is attached on the outside of the ribs. From the front view of our little skeleton here, who's been in the walls, the front view, obviously we've got the vertebra attaching the ribs and they come to the front to meet the sternum. We have our clavicle, so our collarbone that attaches onto the manubrium, which is between the center at the top of the sternum. And that attaches onto the shoulder blade, which obviously houses our shoulder joint. The function of the ribs and the function of the rib cage is to protect our vital organs, okay? So we've got heaps of things in there that we don't want damaged. We've got the heart, we've got the lungs, obviously we've got our stomach, we've got our liver, we've got our kidneys at the back. The lower end here is obviously our small intestine, large intestine, um, and the actual movement through here is gonna be relatively restricted. So the purpose and the function of the um, thoracic spine is a little bit of movement so there is some movement there primarily it houses the attachment for the ribs which primarily serves to protect our body's vital organs okay so if you think about your upper back and your lower back and your neck as having primary functions 
your lower back weight bears, it takes the majority of your body weight, it transmits forces from the ground through the sacroiliac joints and pelvis. And this is the load bearing section of your upper body. It sits on these big vertebrae. Your neck allows you to see and move and obviously sees where your head goes and it, it allows you great mobility thoracically. So this midsection here where your rib case attaches is attaching the rib and it's attaching the function to keep all your vital organs safe. So when we're thinking about the amount of mobility that we have in each of these joints, think maybe two or three degrees of movement. There's not a massive amount of movement in these joints. However, all together, they give us a lot more mobility. Okay, so thoracic spine can rotate, okay? If I rotate, and I turn my head, I get a little bit more because my head's then helping me. However, if I keep my head still and I rotate, I don't have a lot because I'm losing movement by blocking it. If I turn my head, I can go a little bit further, okay? We can side bend. So we can side bend to the left and to the right, and we can curl and we can extend, okay? So it does all the primary functions of all the other joints in the body, it just does it as a little bit more restricted range. Okay, the um, the movements when we combine them, so turning and curling, turning and extending, side bending and rotating, will mean that we lose little bits of section. So when we're thinking the thoracic spine, we're thinking basically from about here and lower, and we're thinking. Um, where the rib cage ends and track it up and around, that's the bottom end of your um, rib cage. So what happens when we sit like this? And what happens when we're sitting like this? Well, basically all these joints here, so you can see, if we look at this one here, you can see that it's on a, slight angle, okay? Now, to move, they have to slide forwards. And to come into extension, they have to slide back. So as they move forward, they slide forwards on each other. As we come into extension, they slide back on each other. As we side bend, they slide side to side relative to one another. And as they rotate, they have a small amount of rotation to the side. Okay, so you can see not a massive amount as we rotate, as we slide forward, they need to slide forward on the one above, they need to slide back. And this impacts you a little bit, so there's not a massive amount of extension, okay? Now, if you are constantly in that curled position here, you lose the ability to then slide that joint back. And that's when joints get stiff. Also, as we're moving, your ribs, as it attaches in here, it has to move. So my rib here, as I lean forward, my rib has to curl forward. As I come backwards, my rib has to roll backwards. As I move to the side, my rib has to rotate backwards on the side that I'm leaning to and forwards on the opposite side. And as I rotate, it does the same thing. It has to rotate backwards on the side I'm rotating to and forwards for the ribs on the opposite side. So as I move this way, the ribs rotate this way. As I move forward, they both move forward. As I move backwards, they both move backwards. As I side bend, they rotate in opposite directions again, okay? Now, if you are constantly stiff, you lose that. So you lose that ability to then move. So if you have a few degrees of movement here and you get stiff and you've lost that few degrees of movement here, something else has to start working harder because your joints haven't got that range. So then your muscles try and work you a little bit harder and they try and pull you. So you use a bit more effort to try and move. Then your muscles go into spasm and they get tight and they get sore. And then because they're tight and sore, then your joints get stiffer and then you start up a nice little 
vicious circle of things getting tight, things don't move, so you get tighter, so things don't move even more. On the counter side of that, if you have your long muscles of the back of the neck, so your big extensor muscles, your big trapezius muscles that are coming through, if you're constantly in that position, in that fair, your big trapezius muscles are constantly pulling and holding you. So your head is falling forward and your big trapezius muscles are trying to hold your head upright. So they're just hanging on at length. And then you go, oh, everything gets sore and you massage them and you do this and that feels a bit better. And then you go straight back to here and they're working again at length. So you go, ouch, that's sore and you massage them a little bit more. You might do some stretches. So this is where it all starts. Now, once these are in that position here, if you're there for a long period of time, all these small muscles in the neck have also started to get tight. Okay, so if I sit the side on, I'll try and take my jacket off, it's absolutely freezing in here today because the, the weather has just gone to poop. It's absolutely raining and pouring down outside. So if I turn myself side on in my chair, if I'm in a nice upright position, my head sits where it should, my body is open, my shoulders are open, and I'm in a good posture. If I start sliding forward in my chair, my thoracic curvature comes into what we call a kyphosis. I become rounded. My head has gone from here to here, which means that these muscles that were nice and long in that position here are now short. So you can see the distance here to here is short. The distance here to here is long. So as my muscles get short here, all these small muscles in my neck get tight, which is my scalene. So my posterior scalenes, my mid scalenes, my anterior scalenes, my sternocleidomastoid. So that big, that big knot of muscle here gets tight because that gets short. Now, as that gets short and you try and stand up, it's then pulling my clavicle, my collarbone up. Okay, so when I'm now sitting upright, instead of being able to sit up this way, I'm sitting up and everything's tight because these are all short. So it's pulling my upper rib cage with it and my shoulder blades with it, okay? The other thing that's happening is as I'm here and nice and open, as I'm curled, my upper tummy gets tight. So I get short in my upper abs. My shoulders, instead of being nice and long, so there's the coracoid process, which is the little bony bit at the front of my shoulder blade and my short pecs so my pec minor is pulling tight then all these muscles at the front pull tight and in okay my big rhomboid muscles at the back are at length my upper traps are short and long depending on how my posture is and my lower traps are weak okay so i'm now ending up with not only a thoracic spine that doesn't move that much anyway but now I've restricted its movement more because I'm not able to extend I've now restricted its movement more because my muscles have gone tighter and shorter and I'm in that kyphotic position and now I've ended up with short abs restrictions through my diaphragm so it's hard for me to take a breath in my neck muscles are tight my scalenes and my rib cage is tight. And then I try to extend and change it by saying, I'm going to sit up tall. So I do this and I pull my shoulder blades back. Now what happens when I'm doing that and pulling my shoulder blades back is if I'm actually sitting up from a tall position here, side on, my line is good. But if I pull my shoulder blades back, I end up shunting my neck forward because I'm retracting the shoulders which pulls them up and forward which sticks my neck out okay and what i actually want to do is just get my shoulders to their widest point not beyond its widest point okay so inherently what we would naturally do to try and think let's stand upright let's sit upright let's get our bodies back in the chair let's sit up nice and tall inherently might not be the best thing for us so if I straighten myself out, 
if my shoulders are at their widest point here, this is good. As I curl forward, you see my shoulders come closer together. As I straighten up into neutral, I come to the widest point. And as I retract, my shoulders start getting closer together at the back. Okay, I want to be at that widest point. So if you're looking at yourself in the mirror and you're not sure where your shoulders should be, they should be at the widest point, relatively relaxed, and your head should be tall. If they're starting to come closer together at the back, you're pulling too far. If they're coming close together at the front, then you're curling too much. And you want your clavicle line. So if I'm here, you can see my clavicle line here. You want them to be like a smiley clavicle. We don't want what we call a frowning clavicle where they're angry and they're looking like they're frowning because then our shoulders are high. We want them where we actually feel the clavicles are in a smiley position. Okay, so in a nutshell for today, if we are in prolonged static postures, which are curled, we are going to end up with short muscles that pull us into that position. And over time, they become short and restricted so that when we try and move out of that position, the muscles are really, really tight. OK, so they get very, very tight through your pecs. They also get tight through the underarm. So as you try and lift, your lats will be tight because you've been in that position there. So you get restrictions in your arm, okay? Incidentally, if you are in that crunched position, if my arm is nice and open, I get nice fluid movement through my arm. If I have that arm in that forward position, this is where we start to get bursitis. And this is where we start to get rotator cuff problems because as I move my arm here, bone hits underneath bone because this is pulled forward. It's not able to glide in the socket of the joint well, okay? So it's really, really important if you are constantly feeling that you're curled, that you do something to break that pattern. Okay, and that's what we'll go through over the next few days. Um, things that you can do that can release some of this muscle here, things that you can do that can release some of the muscle here, things to look for that you can work on to improve your range and your stretch and your flexibility. Obviously, these are just going to be general guidelines. So we're not able to look at you and say, unless we assess you properly, we're not going to be able to say, actually, your problem's your pec, your problem's your scaling your problem is here and definitely when we see most of the clients that we see when they come in with um, upper back pain that is coming into and potentially headaches and trap pain we definitely generally need to actually do some mobility work with their um, ribs so you know around t3 to t6 area that levels there they tend to be very very stiff and doesn't matter how much release you do with the ball, doesn't matter how much release you do with a, a um, roller, doesn't matter how much work you're doing X, Y, and Z. If you have a stiff joint that is not moving, there is nothing you can do to help that. You need a little bit of guidance to work out how to get that moving and then you can maintain it, but you can't mobilize your own joint. You know, we've tried them 10 times. We can give you lots of stuff that can help you self-mobilize once it's there, once you know where to target. But at the end of the day, there isn't a hard and fast rule. It is going to be you are stiff in your upper back and you are getting pain. These are some guidelines that might help if you actually want to work out what's causing your pain specifically and what you need to do to fix that problem then you thought, well, not unfortunately, you do need to go and get assessed. I mean, that's A, that's what we're here for. But B, it's like saying I've got a cold, but I don't know if it's a cold. I don't know if it's hay fever. I don't know if I've got a cold or I've got a flu. I don't know if I've got this or whether I've just got some irritation. Um, you know, you need to actually go and get it checked with a doctor so that you know that you're managing the right thing. The same thing will happen with pain and discomfort. It's a little bit of stiffness, a little bit of this. It can make you feel better. It can make things move better. But if it's a consistent problem that keeps coming back, you definitely would benefit from getting it looked at properly. So in a nutshell, if you have a look over the next few days, 
what does your normal seated posture look like? Are you sitting well? Do you sit back in the chair? Do you slouch and you've got your body forward in a chair like this and your shoulders are up, in which case you're in that forward head posture, shoulders are up, which is what we see most. And then we've got the phones on top of us like this. Do you sit when you're at home and you favor one side of the chair? So you've got your legs up to the side and you sit like this, in which case the shoulder is here. You can see my right side is going to be short my left side is going to be long so the muscles and the tightness is going to be on this side lower down it's going to be stretching the ribs and everything on this side moving this side of my neck is going to be tight this side of my neck relatively is not I'm shunted with my neck rather than here so it doesn't mean that you have to be 100% symmetrical nice and open 100% of the time it does mean that you need to be aware that Actually, I can rotate that way really well, but I can't rotate that way at all. So maybe when you're driving the car, you make an effort and you look over that shoulder and then you use your reverse cameras. And this is the kind of thing that we will go through throughout the week. So the flavor of it will be, these are some things that will help you. You can try them. If you do have pain, however, the caveat is I would definitely... Um, get it looked at if it's pain that is recurring pain or pain that you're not sure of. And um, incidentally, people who do struggle with their ribs um, and people who do have an issue with the joint in there, as that progresses, a deep breath can hurt. You might find if you cough or sneeze, it hurts or it pinches, or if you turn, you get a bit of a sharp jab and it catches you. Um, there are definitely issues where the ribs then aren't articulating well, they're not moving well. So as you take a breath in and your ribs are supposed to inflate, then what's happening is you get to that point and it's stuck and that's when it hurts. Or you cough and the added pressure jolts. So for tomorrow, we might actually have a change of plan and go through breathing. So um, on the hop thinking, tomorrow we'll go through breathing. The ribs do three or four different ways of breathing. We have apical, we have basal, we have lateral, we have bucket handle. Um, so we'll go through different breathing, um, which can help you get some rib expansion. And that is gonna, again, help with the benefit of being short and shortened through the rib cage. So bit of a nat anatomy lesson today, bit of a babble on what to expect. Um, if you're in a poor posture, you can see I've just become slumped in my posture here. And, you know, that isn't great. So tip for the day, if you've got chairs with arms on them, use the chair with arms on them. If your arms are low, then try and get a chair where you pad them up a little bit with a pillow. So if I grab here, pad that up a little bit with the pillow. Now my shoulders are relaxed. I'm not hanging and dragging. I'm actually relaxed and comfortable. So if you're reading your books or you are um, using your phone, maybe two or three pillows in front of you so you're rested and using your phone rather than slumped and holding a phone, which is then a lot of sustained effort. So day one, done and dusted. Um, day two, tomorrow, we'll see you same time, same place, um, around about one o'clock, um, unless something happens, and we will go through breathing. So if you are joining in or you're joining us live, then have a think about being able to lie down or have a couple of pillows around you so we can go through breathing. Um, and we will see you very soon. So joining me.